Okay, so we have a Lorenz HTS 12 Gen 2 Touch. Um, this is an interesting one. I actually started working on this previously uh, before I decided to do this little video here. Um, so it's a backlight issue. Um, what we, we're zoomed in right now on the backlight circuit. Uh, U17 is LM3492. You can see that. Um, this is just um, right from the data sheet from the IC, typical application uh, schematic, which looks like it's exactly like the circuit on this lower end here. So anyway, um, let me zoom into this uh, microscope and you'll see what's going on here. So I'm going to press power and take a look at what happens here. Not good. Okay, so here's our LED strip. Now, um, we're not able to source the LED driver. We checked um, a bunch of different sources that we have. The normal ones, also DigiKey, Mauser, etc. Uh, they're just not in stock. Uh, all the companies say they're waiting um, for their supplies to be refilled. There's like 18,000 on order or something like that. In any case, uh, no matter what the supply uh, chain issues are, this customer needs their unit back and operational and they need a backlight on it so that's our job to get this uh, get this unit fixed uh, no matter what so we gotta figure out creative solutions to, to fix these things if we can't fix them with the stock components so here's the LED strip there is let's see let's count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, There's 30 LEDs in this strip. Now, the way this uh, is connected, this is actually a really long, narrow uh, PCB, printed circuit board. It looks like the backside is, is aluminum. And uh, there's two power connections coming in here. There's um, two positives and two grounds. And the way this thing is set up, the way this is set up is every other LED is connected. And these LEDs are all connected in series. Now, just like a, um, just like a LED strip, backlight strip on a TV, uh, if your backlight goes out, there's a chance that one or some of the LEDs might be out, taking the whole chain out with it. So... The way these are wired is every other LED is connected. So this LED, this one, this, 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 etc. And that would be one side, either the top supply or the bottom. And uh, you go in one and every other LED, this LED, this LED, this LED, etc. All connected. Now let's see um, the voltage requirements of one LED so we can determine how much voltage is needed for the string. Now our end game here, our goal here, is to power this LED strip without using the circuit uh, on the motherboard. Um, the reason is, as I mentioned, we can't get the part, so we need to figure out a way of powering this. Now, the downside is we don't want to get overly complicated with powering this LED strip. Um, therefore, it's not going to be adjustable. The, uh, the backlight isn't going to be adjustable by the by the customer. So basically, when they turn it on, the backlight's going to be on <clears throat> full blast all the time, which hopefully uh, is okay with the customer. But honestly, it's either that or no backlight. So uh, I'm sure they're going to be fine with it. I hope we'll ask them. But really, there's there's no other options. We can manually adjust the backlight, the voltage to the backlight. But again, that's going to be something we'd set and leave. So. It's not something that could be easily adjustable by the customer because I'm sure they don't want wires hanging out with potentiometers and all kinds of messy stuff like that. So, 
So right now, um, I'm going to put the voltage on my power supply down to like a volt, okay? And actually, very first thing, let's, let's see which side of the LED is um, ground. Which side is the cathode? I'm going to put our meter on continuity mode. So we get a beep out of this. <clears throat> We're going to put our probe. Let's work on the, the top section right now, the top uh, power input. So top and a bottom. Uh, very, very top is positive, then ground, then ground, then positive. So we're going to go to the ground on the top. If we can get our meter on there. And we're just going to go to the very last LED. Now, it might not be this last LED. That top supply might power the second LED in and then every other LED after that. So we're going to test that. So We still have our probe on the top ground. We're going to one side of the LED. No, nope, nothing. The other side. Nothing. The second in. Nothing. So maybe we don't have a good connection here. Let's let's check this. Let's see what's going on. So I definitely have a good connection there. <clears throat> it's kind of awkward to do with one hand. Now maybe, maybe they're breaking the ground. So maybe the ground string. So let's, let's try this. Let's do the positive supply, which is the very, very top, top wire. Let's go to the left side of the LED, and there we go. So what's happening is the positive side is, is going to a trace that's going all the way across to the left side of the board to this LED. And then this LED connects to this LED, and this LED side connects to this side of the LED, etc., etc. So, okay. <clears throat> okay, this is how we're set up right now. So, let's test this. Make sure we're right. Take our meter out of here. Okay, we've got our power supply set to one volt. So according to what we found with the meter, the left side is positive, the right side is ground. So I'm going to put our probes right on this LED. You can see that, and I'm going to slowly increase the voltage. I'm at one and a half volts. I'm at two volts. 2.2, 2.3. Starting to come on at 2.3. 2.4. It's getting brighter. 2.65 it's pretty bright right now 2.8 2.9 we're at 3 I would say 3 is the max voltage for this LED I'm not going to go higher than 3 okay so we know 3 is our max voltage so let's let's write this down. Three volts max per LED, just so we know. Okay. So if three volts is our max per LED, it would make sense that if we came here and here, tried to power two LEDs, six volts would be our max. 
Let's try that. I'm going to turn the power supply up to 6 volts. In fact, I'm, I'm going to go to 5.8 uh, just because I don't want to go to the max on these LEDs. I don't know the specs of these LEDs, so just, just to play it safe. Uh, once we figure this all out and actually build a little circuit to, to power this, uh, we can tweak it and, and increase it a little bit, decrease it, depending on how it looks on the actual display once the unit's powered on. Okay, so we want to come right here and right here. And we got 5.8 volts. So, like I mentioned, the this LED is tied to this one, it's tied to this one, it's tied to this, so it's every other one. So we're going to come to the left side of the left LED. We're going to skip an LED and go to the right side of that third LED. It's deceiving the way I drew this because I'm only drawing the connected string. So this is every other LED. So it would actually be one, three, five, seven, etc. So sorry about the confusion there. There you go. Two LEDs. And by the way, 5.8 volts, extremely bright. Extremely bright. Okay, so let's let's power more than two. Let's try let's try half the string. Okay, so there's 15. Well, let's try um let's try 10. <clears throat> okay, so. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Did I did I miss one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is gonna be ten right here. I'm actually gonna take a sharpie. Just do a little small mark on it just so I don't uh, forget which one I'm working with here. There we go. Okay, so that's 10. So 10 times 3 is 30. So it should be 30 volts for that string. Uh, I want to tone it down a little bit. So let's say... Let's say... 25? 26? We'll try it. Okay. 25 volts. <clears throat> We're going to go on the left side of this first LED. There we go, guys. Awesome. Okay. Uh, my bench power supply is limited to 30 volt output. So I actually can't power this whole string because if we have 15 LEDs <clears throat> 15 LEDs times 3 is 45 volts we would need and we're not able to produce the 45 volts in this power supply so <clears throat> So, so what I'm thinking is we're going to have to break this LED strip up, not physically, electronically, break this up into sections and power it in sections. Um, what I'm thinking is, <clears throat> excuse me, I have quite a few of these, I have quite a few of these little power supplies. These are um, boost converters. Uh, there's boost and buck converters. You can think of it like a like a horse. Like if you if you have a horse and it gets a boost, it's going to go faster. It's going to be uh, in this case more voltage boost. It's boosting the voltage. It's increasing. A buck can be considered if you're riding that horse and it starts bucking, you're going to slow down. It might be acting crazy, but it's going to take you longer to get to the same distance. Is that horse that got a boost so slower so uh, decreases boost is a step up 
Buck is step down. So we're going to run these as boost converters. Um, my goal, I think, is to find the main 12 volt rail on the board. <clears throat> then we're going to come off the main 12 volt rail with a boost converter. And the output of the boost converter is going to go to a section of those LEDs. So each boost converter is going to power a section. Now these boost converters, I think, we can test them, but I think they're like 28 volt max, something like that. So, um, so we can't power the whole string, obviously. So maybe we'll power, I don't know, let's see. Well, maybe five. See, we want to limit the amount of, of converters we have also, obviously. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we have five LEDs, that'd be what, 15 volts, right, max? So we have 15 LEDs per circuit. So we have 30 LEDs total. So we have 30, 30 total LEDs. Now how are we going to break that up? Well, let's see what the max voltage is on these um, on these little boost converters. Now there's two burst con boost converters here. Uh, you can actually snap them and, and you'll have two. But I'm just going to leave them connected for now because we're definitely going to need at least at least two. Uh, I'm assuming more than two. But we'll figure that out in a second. So let's change the power supply to 12 volts because that's what we're going to be working with on the board. Okay, we're at 12. Oh, man. Switch our meter to volts. Okay, let's connect one side. Let me see. So it's labeled right here. Uh, facing me is V in and ground. So that's our input voltage. So let's put one lead on ground, one on V in. Left side's ground, right side's output. So 20 volts, let's <clears throat> let's adjust this trim pot here and see how high we can get. So we're at 2930, wow, 30 volts. Okay, I'm going to go back down to exactly 30. Okay. I guess we might as well check the, the second one. So we have 30 volts to work with here. So these little things are boosting the voltage from 12 
all the way up to 30. It's pretty neat. So we have 30 total LEDs. Now that's total. So let's call it per string. It's 15 LEDs. Now what would be perfect if the max voltage was two volts per LED, and then we could use one boost converter per string. I mean, that would be ideal. That'd be perfect. But at two volts, these LEDs, um, I don't even think they turn on at two volts. I think we tested that, didn't we? Let's, let's try it again. Crank this down to two volts exactly. Okay, we're at two volts. No, no. They don't turn on at two volts, so that's unfortunate. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, well, we could. Well, we could do two things. We could just use more boost converters, or we could take some of these LEDs out of the equation. So let's simulate this here. Let's let's try both. Okay. Let's put the power supply up to 30 volts. And we're going to confirm that We're going to confirm that 30 volts does not power the whole strip. And it doesn't. Okay. Doesn't. So let's uh let's short some of these LEDs and see what happens. Let's take a few out. So maybe maybe this one. I'm going to mark which ones I'm going, to, I'm going to remove. So how many do we have to remove? Well, if we remove two, that's going to give us how many per strip? It's going to be 15, 14, 13. So 13 per strip. Okay, so 13 per strip. So we have 30 volts we're working with here. Divided by 13. It's going to give us 2.3 volts. I don't think that's enough. So what if we do, what if we take out three LEDs? So we have 12. 30 divided by 12 is 2.5. Now, it did turn on at 2.5, if I remember. But it wasn't, it wasn't incredibly bright. So let's, um, let's try 11. 11 total LEDs per strip. So it's 30 divided by 11. 2.7. I think 2.7 is is probably the perfect, the perfect number here. So 11. If we want to shoot for 11, uh, 15 minus 11 is 4. So we want to take out 4. Okay. So let's let's try that. So we're starting at the very left side. So we're going to leave that one. Let's leave that one. Let's take this one out. Let's leave that one. Let's leave that one. Let's take this one out. Let's leave that. Leave that. Take that out. And what are we at? Three. Leave that. Leave that. Take that out. So it's sort of even. I'm trying to... My, what I'd like to do is distribute the light sort of evenly. I don't want any dark, dim spots, so. 
So let's try that. So we're going to remove that one. We're not going to remove it, but we're going to short it. We're going to short this one, this one, this one. Okay. Okay, so let's start shorting these LEDs. Let's zoom in on our camera here. Okay. Our iron is nice and hot. I'm going to put a little flux on each one of these. Now we need some wire. Let's see. Uh, give me one sec. I'm just going to grab some Cat6. He uses hookup wire real quick. Okay, back. So just a quick recap, what we did is we, we shorted um, four LEDs to bring our overall required voltage down to something reasonable that one of these boost converters can supply. So uh, LED one, two, three, took it out of circuit, four, five, six, out of circuit, seven, eight, nine, out, 10, 11, 12, out which brought us down to 11 LEDs because we took four out 15 minus four is 11 <clears throat> and we want um, 
Uh, we're going to say 2.5 volts per LED. We're going to say that's on our high side. So 2.5 volts times 11 LEDs is 27.5 volts. So we set our power supply to 27.5 volts. And if, if we did everything correctly, uh, this whole LED strip should light pretty much max brightness as soon as we turn this on. So, Okay, there we go. I definitely would not say max brightness though. So um, we have our boost converter set for 30 volts. So let's let's jack up the power supply. Let's let's go to 28. I want to do this slowly because we don't want to burn anything up. We do not have spare backlight strips for for this well any unit. So we want to be careful here. Okay, so that's 28 volts. That's uh, that's still fairly dim. So let's let's go to 28.5. Now we're getting bright. I think we can safely go up to 29. Okay, we're at exactly 29 volts. This should be pretty bright. That's pretty bright. That's pretty bright. So, <clears throat> so 29 volts divided by 11 LEDs. So we have a 2.63 volt drop across each LED. Which... Um, which I think we said, what did we say? 2.7 volts was our max. So if we did, if we did go 30 volts divided by 11, that'd be 2.7. So you know what? Let's let's do the 30 volts. Now this should be extremely bright. So I'm gonna put. Oh yeah, absolutely max brightness. Extremely bright. Um. I think I think we're gonna be okay. I mean, this is very very bright. Okay, so uh, I think this is gonna work. Okay, let's do the same thing for the second strip, <clears throat> the second circuit in here. We're gonna short four LEDs, and uh, and once we short those four LEDs, we'll we'll give it a test. And then what we can do is we can just use one boost converter and we'll just go in parallel. We'll come off 30 volts, go to one strip, 30 volts the other strip, and we should be good to go. We should be we should be good guys here. So let's give it a shot. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to figure out how to distribute these basically off LEDs, these shorted LEDs, in order to make the, the no dead spots. Uh, to sort of um, make everything uh, the same illumination, I guess, if that makes sense.
once it's installed. So I decided to take out this, this first LED on the second strip, which is actually physically the second LED on this, this board. So uh, based on what we did before, we have an off LED, an on LED, an on LED, an off LED. So it's off, on, on, off. So let's let's do that. So off, on, on, off. So off, on, on, off. Off, on, on, off. Off, on, on, off. And that should be four. One, two, three, and that is not four. That's five. What do we do? Let's see. One, two, three, four, yep. Okay. So how are we gonna do this? Well, I suppose let's let's leave this first one on because over here there's one, two, three, four LEDs. One, two, three, four LEDs. So that'd be perfect. So it'd be brighter on the left and right side. And then it would be sort of the same illumination across the center. So let's get a little isopropyl alcohol so I don't confuse myself here. Okay, good. So one two three four perfect we're gonna go ahead and short these four LEDs and then we're going to we're going to clip off this connector here we're gonna connect or short the grounds in the positives and then we're gonna try to uh, with the bench power supply at 30 volts we're gonna try to power this whole entire LED strip with 30 volts and see where we're at. If this looks good and works okay, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these jumpers out and actually, uh, I think we're just gonna go ahead and remove the LEDs and short them. Okay, we're gonna remove them and short them. Uh, and put, uh, you know, short them with small jumpers. So this, because this thing has to physically fit back in the case. Uh, and then we're going to reinstall, and fingers crossed, this thing is going to be working like factory. If not like factory, at least working so the customer can see the display comfortably. Um, okay, let's do that. Okay, so we temporarily shorted those LEDs uh, just as a test. We're going to go ahead and clip both of these here. Strip both. Connect the positive to the positive, negative to the negative. And we are going to 
test this on our bench power supply. Now what we should really do when we, if everything works as expected, the boost converters power this, which it should, uh, we shouldn't really take 12 volts directly off the rail and right to the boost converter. I mean, we're going to check on the power supply how much this strip is going to draw. Just give me a quick sec. Rudolph Electronic Repair, Chesapeake. Okay. Um, what were we doing here? Okay, so let's let's try this. Let's connect. Positive lead. And our negative lead here. Need some new clip leads here. <clears throat> okay, so we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 30 volts. Okay, I mean, we should be good here. Let's, let's try it. Look at that. Okay. I think that's gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna grab a quick coffee, bear it back. Okay. Um, so this is gonna work fine, I think. Uh, so the next step here is to remove these LEDs just to just to make it a little cleaner. I mean, we could do this. We could jump these LEDs um, and leave it that way, but uh, if we're going to do this modification, I'd rather do it right, make it clean. Uh, so we're going to remove all these jumpers that we made as a test. We're going to move those, remove all the LEDs. We're going to short each and every one. We're going to clean it all up, um, put some adhesive on this guy, install it back in the display, put everything back together, and then before we do anything with the backlight, I want to power the unit back up just to make sure everything still works, the display still works okay. Uh, and then what we can do is once it's powered up, we can just hook this right up to our bench power supply and we'll know immediately right off the bat if, if this is going to work or not. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, uh, we just spoke with the customer uh, just now and we let them know what we did. Um, they're totally happy. They're, they're, they're happy we could do this. Um, unfortunately, if we didn't do it this way, he wouldn't have a working unit. I mean, it's not possible. So, uh, I don't know when these chips are going to be available. Who knows? Uh, so anyway, he's, he's totally happy. I asked him, do you want it max brightness or what would be best for you? Uh, and he said, um, because he fishes in the morning, I guess, uh, like mid brightness. Um, so what I'm going to do is as I said we're going to remove these LEDs now that we got customer approval to do so we're going to go ahead and remove these LEDs short them like we said clean up the strip um, we're going to use some just double-sided tape um, we, have, we, we actually have uh, adhesive tape double-sided tape that's used for um, uh, TV backlights so I mean perfect we're going to use that I'll probably throw some like B7000 adhesive on this also just to make sure because there is like a bend in this guy from when I removed it because I was just sort of inching it with the with the spudger tool and by doing that because this seems to be backed with aluminum it sort of bent the aluminum so anyway we just want to make sure we have enough adhesion uh, to keep it um, to keep it secure uh, okay so what I was saying is once this is all back together I told the customer what we'll do is we'll adjust the voltage on the bench power supply and we'll send him several pictures of the voltage adjusted and then he can sort of pick uh, which illumination level he wants. He said mid so I'm assuming it's probably going to be like 28 volts something like that 27 and a half to 20 no, probably not 27 and a half because that was pretty dim 
probably like 28, 28.5, something like that. In any case, we'll let him decide. And uh, I even told the customer, I said, because this is a very uh, unique situation, um, in the future, uh, if it's just not bright enough for him or if it's too bright, ship it back to the shop. I mean, it's going to be fairly easy for us to adjust the illumination on this. Like, literally, we just turn... Um, we just turn this pot here and uh, we can adjust the the brightness because we're obviously adjusting the voltage um, so I said yeah no problem just ship it back to us I mean we won't even charge him labor just ship it back we'll adjust it however he wants uh, get it back together and ship it back to him it's no problem it only take a second uh, okay so we're gonna get started on this Okay, so what I want to do real quick is um, the LEDs close to the LEDs that I removed. I noticed some low temp uh, solder float onto those. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, this might be overkill, but I'm going to remove the solder that I think might be low temp and replace it with some regular unleaded. The reason is I'm not sure how hot these strips get, but considering there's an aluminum back plate on here, uh, that's probably for heat dissipation. So I don't want to take a chance of these LEDs uh, desoldering themselves. So uh, it's only going to take a minute. I'm going to go ahead and hit these with solder wick and then resolder them with the unleaded. Okay, what we're going to try is uh, copper foil tape. If this doesn't work out the way we expect, we'll switch to, switch to wire. Okay, should be an okay size. Put a little fresh flux on here. OK, 
Okay. What I did is I just folded that foil up. I didn't want to take any chance of any shorting on that aluminum back plate there. The heat sink. There we go. I think that'll work just fine. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so uh, we finished um, removing all those LEDs, and we also finished shorting across all those pads. Again, we used uh, foil tape, if you can see that, it's foil tape stuff. Uh, first couple were sort of a test, uh, and then you can kind of tell as we progressed, we kind of got better at it. Um, the reason is that the thickness of the foil tape. At first, we were using the foil tape um, in this direction here. And the problem was it's slightly too too thick, so I had to bend over the foil tape uh, the first few. And then what we started doing is actually using the tape in this direction. That way we can control the thickness. Um, and it just so happens uh, the thickness of the tape itself was perfect to fit between the two pads. So in any case, uh, we did that. Worked out pretty good, I think. Um, let's test it. So, so happens when you short your power supply. <laughs> okay, so uh, green to black in my case, white to red. There we go. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay. So we're going to clean the back of this strip up. I'm going to kind of clean my workspace here a little bit. I'm going to pull the display back over here. We're going to mount the backlight LED strip. And, um, and then we're going to test it when the unit's on. And then once we know everything is good, then we're going to worry about um, 
how we're going to hook up our boost converter. In fact, now we only need one. So that's that's awesome. Put that back in where it goes. Okay, we're kind of cleaned up a little bit here. Let's grab our display. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're going to gently lift this up here. Now what we want to do is reinstall this backlight. Problem is we have, you know, we still have adhesive there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my reflow station, my hot air gun here. I'm going to try to heat up this aluminum. To sort of reuse that adhesive that's already on there. Seems okay so far. Let's try to power this backlight up real quick, see what happens. Make sure we're not shorted anywhere. We're good. We are good. Okay. We're going to throw the screws back in this plate. Um, we're going to put the board on and, and start testing. Okay, we're at 12 volts. We're gonna grab our boost converter that we already set for 30 volts. Okay, so let's uh, let's just solder some wires on this boost converter real fast. Now hopefully this works out okay, it should, uh, from the test we did, but This is um this is really the only way this could have been repaired. I mean, uh we, we can't get the chips, you know, the, the chip shortage or whatever the case is. Um no matter what the issue is, 
it doesn't matter. The, the customer needs their unit and you have to figure out a creative solution in order to repair their unit. In a perfect world, we'd have schematics for these things, we'd have spare um, components, but we do not have schematics for these. And currently there's shortages all over the country uh, because the, I guess the importation of, of chips, we don't make them, some of these chips in America. In fact, we, I think we make few, very few chips in America. So we have to overcome that. And um, that's what we did today. Fingers crossed it's going to work. But this would have been... This would have been an unrepaired unit if we didn't do this. This would have been uh, scrap. I mean, the customer would not have been able to use it. So I'll try to teach the kids come up with creative solutions if they say they can't do something. Figure out a way to do it. There has to be a way. Figure out a way. Be creative. Think outside of the box. And usually, if you sit there and think about it, You'll figure out a way to get whatever task you need done, done. You just don't want to give up. It's very easy to give up. It's easy to say, oh, sorry, I can't do it. Have somebody else do it. Or It's a lot harder to take responsibility and get something done. But it's more rewarding, too. Much more rewarding. Okay, so where's our input? This is our input here. So we're going to hook our power supply. Let's get our leads out of the way here. There. Phew. Cool. Okay. So it's powering up. I see it says Lawrence right there. We are going to see if our boost converter works. Everything's still connected. Yep. So positive to positive. Let's wind these back up again. Look at that, guys. Excellent. We have backlight. And you really can't notice any dim spots so far. We'll see once it fully boots up. But we repaired this unit uh, without, without using the existing onboard... Uh, backlight controller, the LED driver, we totally bypassed it. Um, works. Again, the customer is not going to have control of the illumination, but they don't care as long as as long as the unit works. That's what they care about. So there we go. Excellent, excellent. Well, guys, we saved this from uh, from the dumpster, basically. I mean, this was... There was no chance with this one. Uh, chip wasn't available. And uh, we got it fixed. We're going to give this a quick test, and we're going to throw the rest of the screws in the display, put it all back together, and we'll get back with you. Okay, so we have just a couple more 
obstacles to overcome before we can consider this done. Everything is working perfectly, but in order to power um, this tiny power supply from the board, we want to make sure we do it in a way where we're not going to uh, put any unneeded stress on the internal power supplies on this guy. So basically what we need to do, by the way we tested, this is drawing almost an amp, 0.9, so 900 milliamps to drive those uh, backlight LEDs. That's, that's, that's a significant amount. So we don't want to just tap off somewhere on the board because um, that's going to put an additional amp. And I mean that you could take a chance of uh, burning up a power supply on the board here. So we definitely don't want to do that. Um, the correct way to do this would be to come off main power. Now if we come off main power right to our power supply, the backlight's going to be on all the time, and we can't have that. that. That's that's crazy. So we can't have the backlight on all the time. So turning the unit on has to turn on our backlight circuit. Now how are we going to do that? Well, uh, we need to find a 12-volt rail somewhere on the board. Okay. Um, so any one of these inductors... Uh, will we'll be part of a power supply. So let's say let's say this right here, this inductor. So we're gonna go now. Right now the unit's off. The backlight is on. I mean, but we can, you know, we can easily disconnect the backlight. No big deal. Okay. So we're gonna take ground from our shield here. Go to one side of this coil. It's pretty much nothing. Okay, now let's turn the unit on. So unit is on. So now we have 11 volts. 11 and a half. 11 and a half. Okay. Let's check a couple other. Let's check this cap. So that's the ground side. It's positive, 11. I mean, we could take it from anywhere, really. This cap, 11, uh, this coil, this is 5, so we don't want to take it from there. I would say right here is a good candidate, so we'll take it off this, this inductor here. Let's just make sure that once we... Turn the unit off. Actually, let me do this so you guys can see here. Here, let's put this here. So, unit's off. So, let's turn the unit on. There we go. Okay. So, now we know where we're going to take our, our supply rail from. Actually, I'm sorry. So we need we need a 12 or 11 volt rail when the unit's on. Okay. the The reason is we need something to trigger and turn on our power supply. Now, how are we going to do that? What we're going to do is we're going to take uh, 12 volts off the main connector here. Let's turn the unit off. Okay, we're going to take 12 volts off the main connector, um, we're going to go to a MOSFET, and we're going to turn the MOSFET on with the positive voltage off this coil. The MOSFET itself is going to drive our little power supply. Okay, so the MOSFET's going to take the brunt of that current, and no other power supplies on the board itself. Okay, so let's let's do that. So we know we're going to come off here. Uh, let me dig around and find a, a good candidate, good MOSFET that we could use for this, and we'll, we'll test the MOSFET first um, before we go ahead and start installing this stuff. Okay, so we sort of just rigged this up real quick, just to explain. So here's our MOSFET, our N-channel MOSFET. So our drain is our supply voltage coming in 12 volts. 
That's actually coming into the fish finder itself. Uh, hopefully you can see this okay. Um, our source is what's going to drive our backlight power supply, which is right there. Okay. Uh, the other side of the backlight power supply obviously goes to ground. Our gate, this is what controls uh, the flow through the drain of the source. You can think of the gate uh, like a like a um, a valve in plumbing. Okay. Um, in this case, the valve is either on or off. That's how we're controlling this thing. On or off, like a switch. So this MOSFET's acting like a switch, except it's it's supplying power directly from the rail. So the benefit is we're not going to put any stress on any power supplies on the motherboard, but this will be switched when the power button is turned on. So when the unit's on, the, the backlight isn't going to be on all the time. The, that's the whole purpose of this, okay? So the gate is pulled down with a 1K resistor to ground. So the reason we do this is uh, there's no chance of this thing turning on when it shouldn't turn on. So when there isn't a positive voltage on the gate, so when the fish finder is not on, the gate is going to be shorted. Uh, the gate is going to be connected to ground, ground potential. So this is going to be, switch is going to be off. Okay. Um, as soon as this positive voltage is sensed, this is going to turn on and allow current flow um, in this direction. Okay, let's test this. We set it up real quick. Here's our MOSFET. Um, okay, so uh, drain source gate. Uh, that's how this is. Uh, left pin is uh, drain, which is our plus 12. Uh, middle, which is this large contact on the uh, MOSFET, if you can see that. Uh, source and gate is the, the last pin to the right. So we have the gate going to this um, this 1K resistor. And now let's let's test this real quick. Okay, so our power supply is on. We have 12 volts going into this right now. So if we take the plus 12 volts and we touch the top of this resistor, which would be right here. Let's see if let's see if this thing turns on. Now I have the meter connected to the output of our new backlight power supply. So if this turns on, you should see 30 volts on the meter. Let's test it. Three, two. There we go. Uh, if we remove it, again, it should go down to zero because of that pull-down resistor. Excellent. Chart again. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, now that we know this works, we're going to um, mount... We're going to mount the MOSFET and um, the new power supply in the unit itself. In fact, what we're probably going to do is is mount this on a separate board uh, to give this guy a little bit of a heat sink. Um, and then we'll mount it inside the unit itself and then we'll connect the wiring. We'll give it a test and if everything works like it should, a uh, customer already confirmed that the illumination is perfect so we're not going to reset the voltage. We're going to keep it we're going to keep it at 30 volts. Um, we should be good to go. All right, let's get back to you once uh, once I get this thing on a board and mount it up.
I'm just gonna clean up a little bit and then we'll uh, we'll start mounting this board up. Okay, we're back here. Let's see. So here's a little board we made. Here's our uh, MOSFET driver, which turns on and drives the new backlight power supply. In this whole thing, if we roughly measured correctly, should be able to fit right there. These leads are going to go to power and coil. And the backlight wires are going to solder directly onto this little power supply. Okay. Should be fine. Now let's see. We need we need to tap off our 12 volts coming in. So let's put the meter in continuity mode. Figure out where that is. So top side's positive on this. Okay, so it's that trace right there. So if we hooked everything up right, if our MOSFET's hooked up right and our power supply is working, what should happen is we should turn on the power button and immediately the backlight should kick on. When we turn off the power, we, we power it down, the backlight should go off. If the backlight stays on all the time, there's a problem. If the backlight doesn't go on, there's a problem. So, um, Let's give this a try. We're at 12 volts, and we are. Turn our power supply back off. Okay. Okay. We have 12 volts on the power supply and the backlight is not on, that's a good thing. We're gonna press the power. As soon as this uh, thing powers up, all the power supplies energize, our backlight should kick on, and we should see the, um, the boot up logo here. In three, two. That is not happening, so that means we have an issue. So let's see what's going on here. Let's have a look. Okay, so we have... Ah, uh, ah. Uh, silly mistake here. We don't have, we don't have a ground yet on our board, so. 
So let's do that. Let's add a ground. Let's see. Let's kind of keep the same color scheme we've been using. So we're going to use a blue for our ground. So we're going to come off the left side of that cap right there. Let's throw some flux on here. Okay, let's try this again now. Now we got a proper ground. Again, when we first turn on the power supply, backlight should not go on. Let me see if I can prop this up somehow. There, hopefully you can see that. Okay, backlight shouldn't go on in three, two, Okay, there's no backlight there. In fact, I'm going to turn off the lights in the shop real quick so we can see this a little better. Okay, no backlight. I'm going to press the power button. And there we go. Beautiful. Excellent. So there we go, guys. Custom backlight power supply uh, without using... Um, the backlight driver. We didn't have this guy, but we figured out a way of getting this going for the customer anyway. Looks perfect, looks beautiful. Everything works. Excellent. So now, last test. Obviously, if you touch brightness, it's gonna do nothing, because we have our own backlight driver. So that's okay, customer's fine with that. Last test, power. Backlight should turn off. When the power goes off, let's test that. Beautiful. There we go. So last test we need to do. Let's turn the power supply off. We're going to get the rest of the screws put back in here. And there you go. Custom backlight controller, guys. So if you have a board with a backlight dead and there's no chance of, of repairing it, we can build you one of these and get you back in business. Give me a few minutes, I'm going to get the screws back in this thing, and uh, I'll get it back together. Okay, back. There we go, guys. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. So we got a nice backlight. We don't see any dim spots on the screen whatsoever. Uh, even though, if you recall, we did remove several LEDs from the backlight in order to be able to power properly. No effect at all. I mean, zero effect. It looks exactly... Um, like a stock backlight would. Perfect. We're going to try to power this off. And as soon as the unit fully shuts down, the backlight should go dark. And there it is. Perfect. All right, this job is done. Um, we're going to write this up, invoice the customer, print out a shipping label, and get it back to them. Uh, anybody has um, any Lawrence fish finders, uh, and we repair all electronic devices so if you have anything that needs work 
uh, even something you think might be a lost cause or, or if you can't find parts, let us know. Um, we try to find a creative solution to get these, these units fixed. We know uh, it doesn't matter how it's fixed as long as it's a good quality fix and the customer's happy, that's all that matters. So uh, any questions, RudolphRepairs at gmail.com. Uh, go to www.RudolphRepairs.com. Uh, click on the mail-in section to mail it in, the free estimate section to get a free estimate, uh, and we'll get back with you next time.